Hello, welcome to another video. We will evaluate the sum of the series. This already looks like a sum. And what if we just plug in n equals 1, we get an answer, and then n equals 2, what eventually will it turn out to be? Uh, that's not the mission of this type of question because you're, you're given the Taylor series representation of a particular function and you have to be able to see that so whenever you get a formula like this and you're asked to find the sum of the series, it's because you're expected to recall some of the standard series, um, uh, Taylor series expression for some popular functions. And the most popular ones are e to the x, sine of x, cosine x. Sometimes they may, might throw in uh, maybe 1 over 1 minus x, or they might throw in arctan x. You have to be able to know what those characteristic functions are as a calculus two student or whatever level of calculus you're taking. So it's required that you know what the sum, the Taylor series representation um, is for each of these three functions I'm going to write. So the first one is e to the x. You're going to compare whatever you have to e to the x if it looks like it. If it doesn't look like it, it's not it. Then you move on to sine x, then you move on to cosine x. So what is the Taylor series representation for these three things I just mentioned? Let's get into the video. The representation for e to the x is the simplest and which you must know, okay? You can't say, oh, I forgot or oh, I mixed it up. It has to be, the easiest way is to write it this way. It's x to the 0 over 0 factorial plus x to the 1 over 1 factorial plus x to the 2 to the second over 2 factorial. You see how this one does not require any memorization. You're going from 0 to infinity. That's it. You start from this. But we can evaluate the first one. Anything to the zero power, as long as x is not zero, is going to be one, and zero factorial is one. So the first term here is one. So in some expressions, this could be written as one plus, and the next term is going to be x to the one over one factorial, which is x plus, and you keep going, this is going to be x squared. So in general, you usually have it written this way. Okay, it goes on, but there's a short formula for it. This is the same. So this keeps going until you just say, okay, the total of this is the sum. I'm not going to do that for this one. I'm just going to write this final formula. This is, from what you see, it's basically x raised to power n divided by n factorial. That's it. That is an easy way for you to write this. So we say n goes from 0 to infinity. This is the Taylor series representation of e to the x. So if you get a problem where in the formula given like this, what you see here is not x. If they put the number 2 there, okay, then it means you just need to replace x with 2. So e squared can be written in short form as 2 to the n over n factorial. And that's it. So it's the same idea you're going to apply when you're dealing with sine of x. So what is the Taylor series representation of sine of x? I'm just going to write this kind of formula, which is going to be equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 raised to power n multiplied by, since this is x, it's going to be x raised to 2n plus 1 divided by n to n plus 1 factorial. This is the Taylor series representation of sine x. Remember, it's important to know there's always a negative 1 raised to power n because for trig functions, they fluctuate, sine and cosine, they fluctuate between positive and negative, and that's why this is there. Otherwise, this should be your focus. Now, what would happen if it was cosine? Well, it's, this, it's very similar to it. It is a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n 
multiplied by, this is now going to be x to the just 2n over, this is going to be just 2n factorial. You have to recognize the difference between this and this, and look at the difference, it's just this one. Remember that when you integrate cosine x, you get sine x. And when you differentiate this, you get this, that's it. Okay, please remember these three so that whatever problem you get on your test or whatever you're doing, you can answer the question. So now, let's go to this question. What, which of these functions, because we just, let's just, because I know the answer is one of these. Which of these functions looks like this? Clearly, it is the sine function. Just because you look at the factorial, now, the factorial may be difficult to manipulate. The exponent is easy to manipulate, but the factorial might be dif difficult. So what you want to focus on is the factorial. So I look at this, I see that this factorial looks just like this. So I'm going to assume that whatever I've written here is the sign of something. I just need to know what that something is. Okay, so let's say we're going to say that uh, the given function... looks like a sine function. So we know that sine something is equal to this. We just need to know what that something is. So let's look at the standard things that we always get in the sine function. We know it's going to have this. Does it have it? Yes. We know it's going to have this. Does it have it? Yes. We know it's going to have something raised to power 2n plus 1, yes. But this guy is just hanging out there. There's a problem with this guy. What should we do with him? Okay, now I'm going to show you that everything in your sine function has to be raised. If it is raised to an exponent, this has to be raised to 2n plus 1, and this must be raised to 2n plus 1 for you to be able to do any manipulation with it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to change this to something 4 to the 2n plus 1, and then adjust it to keep the value. So watch. We know that 4 to the 2n can be written as 4 to the 2n times 4 divided by 4. See, this doesn't change anything. So 4 to the 2n plus 1 is the same thing as this. But if I multiply this 4 by this 4, see, this is 4 to the power 1. This is going to become 4 to the 2n plus 1, but now I am dividing it by 4, okay? Multiply by 1 over 4. So this expression, therefore, this sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, let's write, negative 1 to the n divided by, this is all divided by, 4 to the 2n. And then we have 2n plus 1 factorial pi to the 2n plus 1 is the same thing as... Now, I have rewritten this expression to look like this. So this is going to be the same thing as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, 4 to the 2n plus 1 divided by 4. Oh, I can bring the 1 over 4 all the way here. Let's put it here. Divided by 4 times 2n plus 1 factorial, and on top I have pi to the 2n plus 1. So this is equal to, this is equal to the sum, I think we're done, we're at the end now, n equals 0 to infinity, and I have negative 1 to the n, and if this joins this guy, this flips, it becomes a big giant 4, which I can actually write in the back here. Since it's a number, it's not included, okay? Giant 4, and here, this goes here, it becomes pi over 4, raised to power 2n plus 1, all divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. And it looks exactly like this where our x is equal to pi over 4. So this is equal 
to 4 times. If x is pi over 4, it means this is sine pi over 4 multiplied by 4. Nice. And what does that mean? This is the same thing as 4 times. What is sine pi over 4? Is rad 2 over 2. So our answer is 2 rad 2. See you in the next video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.